Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And this is the lapel pin for Most Worshipful Grand Master Thomas L. Cumberland, Grand Master of the state of Mississippi for 2018. And it was done by Edgar Alejandro over at Masonic Revival. We are into the last section of the seven liberal arts and sciences that are discussed in what I call and what is commonly known as the staircase lecture. It reads, Astronomy is that divine art by which we are taught to read the wisdom, strength, and beauty of the Almighty Creator in those sacred pages, the celestial hemisphere. Assisted by astronomy, we can observe the motions, measure the distances, comprehend the magnitudes, and calculate the periods and eclipses of the heavenly bodies. By it we learn the use of the globes, the system of the world, and the preliminary law of nature. While we are employed in the study of this science, we must perceive unparalleled instances of wisdom and goodness and, through the whole creation, trace the glorious author by his wondrous works. So just as a little recap, if you didn't see the previous video, you might want to check that out. We're talking about seven liberal arts and sciences, and here in Mississippi, we really only provide a lengthy explanation for two of them, those being geometry and astronomy. And in the last video, we talked about geometry and how each one of these liberal arts and sciences sort of leans on one another. So by learning grammar, we can better learn rhetoric. So if you didn't see that video, make sure you go back and check it out for a better explanation of what's really going on here. Here we have reached astronomy and we're having to lean upon many different things that really help us know how to practice the science and art of astronomy. But what we're specifically talking about here, uh, or at least there's a great big tie into it, is how much geometry really ties into the ability to do these specific tasks that we're talking about in astronomy. Now first off we talked about how uh, astronomy is a divine art and that it allows us to view the wisdom, strength, and beauty of the Almighty Creator. Uh, and it refers to the celestial hemisphere or the sky above us as the sacred pages. And I think that's pretty interesting because uh, we learn that, and this is going to come up in the next video, we learn that there is a lot about nature that helps us better appreciate divinity. And by appreciating it, we learn and our desire to study it so we can understand it and keeps keeps going. It's just a, a domino effect. So I think it's just an interesting concept and something that ever since I got my own fellow craft degree, uh, especially after a lodge meeting, um, I can't help but to take just a few seconds and make sure that I stare up at the heavens and just think about how amazing it is. We, we tend to get caught up in our day-to-day -day world and not really consider just how much more is out there, even here on the planet. And to take just a few minutes to gaze up at the heavens and realize what really has been created and just how vast and expansive it really is and to contemplate what else might be out there uh, is, is a very humbling thing but it's also a thought-provoking thing so um, I hope that's something that that some of you do if not each one of you so next we get into those things that uh, geometry kind of touches on it says assisted by astronomy uh, we can observe the motions uh, so we're talking about the movement of uh, anything that's in the sky above us measure the distances so using geometry is um, in a general and perhaps over simplistic way how we are able to consider how far away objects in the sky actually are comprehending the magnitudes is is how big they are and calculate the periods and eclipses of the heavenly 
bodies. And so, of course, uh, as we rotate around our star, the sun, and as our Earth tilts uh, throughout the revolutions, and as everything else in the universe is spiraling in a helix kind of fashion, uh, we can observe these things, we can measure their distances, we can comprehend how big they are, and in doing all of those things we can calculate the periods and eclipses and consider when is it going to come back again. So uh, I think these are pretty interesting things and I don't know uh, about you, but sometimes when I'm trying to memorize this work to actually perform it in a ritual, uh, I have to try to find ways to remember to keep things in order. Uh, and for this particular section, I find myself thinking about it quite literally. Uh, I'm, I'm standing there in a field and I'm noticing the nighttime sky, but I can see a shooting star or I can see a planet uh, and I'm thinking about it moving. And so the first thing that I can do just by standing there and looking and nothing more is I can observe the motion. So that's my foundation. Um, and then the next perhaps curious question you might have through your mind, a, the natural progression is, I wonder how far away that is. And so we're going to measure the distance. And then if you think about, well, I wonder how far away that is, then your next logical question might be, I wonder how big that is. If it's that far away and it looks that big here, I wonder how big it really is in, you know, in, in real life, so to speak, up close. Uh, and then of course well that was neat I wonder when it's going to come back again so I can see it again so now we're calculating the periods and eclipses of the heavenly bodies so uh, just my two cents on how I go about remembering uh, this particular section of uh, the ritual uh, by it we learn the use of the globes so we're kind of hearkening back to the beginning of this degree where we talked about the globes that were on top of the pillars uh, the system of the world and the preliminary law of nature. So there is a lot to try to piece out in there and I usually try to make sure my videos stay in a very small and digestible format so I am not going to go into how I feel each one of these things, use of the globe, system of the world, preliminary law of nature are all tied to astronomy um, but here they are for you to remember and review at your leisure. Now I think is perhaps uh, one of the more um, grandiose, maybe that's not the right word, but uh, impactful uh, statements in our ritual work. And uh, perhaps one of those things that, you know, to me, if you're a Freemason, this is one of those phrases that when somebody comes up to you or you see something online where somebody says, uh, that, that Freemasons aren't religious or that we worship some sort of uh, obscure deity that is not the God that most of humanity would recognize. Um, this statement right here usually is what comes into my mind and I want to kind of scream it from the rooftops at him but I also want to subdue my passion on that. But here it is again. I know you already heard me read it, read it but Remember, we're talking about astronomy, so we are observing all of these wonderful things in creation that are making us ponder not only the far away and the grandiose, but also even the things that are up close to us. And here we are told, while we are employed in the study of this science, astronomy, we must perceive unparalleled instances of wisdom and goodness, and through the whole creation, trace the glorious author with a capital A by his capital H wondrous works. So explain to me how it is Freemasons don't recognize God and yet we're purposefully teaching men that they should observe the creation around them and in doing so they have really no choice but to try to trace those things back to the Creator himself. I just, I just don't understand it. But I think that that is certainly something that keeps me grounded, uh, to, to sit there and contemplate those things. Uh, most, if not all of us, have sometime wondered, uh, either privately or aloud, 
why some things happen in the world. Maybe it's a, a large event that happened and impacted a lot of people. Maybe it's something more private, like the passing of a child or a parent or a loved one. And we question why do these kind of things have to happen and maybe even doubt at times. But I think that this is one of those uh, statements that, again, it keeps me grounded. It makes me take the time to realize what is going on around me and how all of these systems work and play off each other and how one tragedy can really be an inspiration for something positive in another way. Uh, and I think that if we can take the time to actually make these kind of observations, then we can not only learn more about astronomy and nature and and have a um, perhaps a larger appreciation for uh, deity and creation in general but we can also start to sort of temper our emotions and realize that there is something bigger and there are things that um, play into a grander plan uh, I need to get this video ended because I know I'm already starting to ramble, but this is my favorite lecture in all of Freemasonry still to this day. One sort of an example. I was watching this BBC documentary, and if I remember properly, they were talking about this woodland that had a lot of damage done to it by an insect. Uh, it caused a whole bunch of trees to die and decay. But what was interesting about it is we we instantly think that's a bad thing. As, as humans, generally speaking, the, the general populace would say, oh, well, that's bad. We need to do something about these insects. We need to uh, protect the trees and that sort of thing. But the documentary uh, made a very um, important point about following the progress of the forest. And they showed about how because these trees fell, the canopy was opened up and a lot of ground vegetation was able to grow because the sunlight was actually getting to the ground. And they documented about how that uh, little patch of land that got cleared up started to provide food sources for other forms of life. And that without that little patch of land right there, there would have been a lot of different animals that could have struggled or perhaps even died throughout the winter. So it was necessary for the death of the trees to occur in order to give life to so many other things. But then, of course, the trees decay into the, into the ground, provide nutrients to the plants that are going to grow back up. And then again, somewhere else next year, we're going to have this devastation caused by an insect, but so much other life flourish because of it. So those are, those are the kind of things I think about when I hear these lectures and when I teach and give these lectures. And I hope that something along those lines, some deeper thought than the mere words that are at the surface come across your mind as well. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch. Next, we will get into one more lecture in the Fellowcraft degree, and then we're off to the charge, and we'll be done with the Fellowcraft degree. We'll see you next time. Bye.